giving all the praises and the glory and the honor to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai Bashem Haraka Kwadash. Give double honors to all the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone and come Yahshua and rise up to the house of David. At least 88 people have died after nearly 44 reported tornadoes caused destruction. Uh, this is in um, Mayfield, Kentucky. You know, up there in the Midwest, Kentucky. So, let's hear a little bit of this, the backstory of this. And I know, no doubt, they're finding more and more dead bodies every day. Interesting number there 44 tornadoes caused destruction. Let's, let's hear what's going on. There's a couple of videos on this um, aftermath of the um, those tornadoes that's taking place over there. Interestingly, it's predominantly Edomite area. Where they had Jake and they still have Jake there. You know, under treat them as second class citizens. And they had us under that heavy yoke of slavery, man. And the most I is angry with these people, no doubt. Let's check it out, man. God, please send us some help. Somebody please send us some help. We are trapped. There was a, a water fountain an air conditioning unit and then five feet of debris on top of me <laughs> and we are trapped please y'all get us some help we're at the candle factory in mayfield i'm grateful for it because i believe that it saved me it being there saved my life unable to move unable to escape for nearly three hours kiana parsons perez was trapped in darkness and debris death and despair around her there are some people who still haven't made it home. Some of them are in hospitals still. And it's, you know, why me? Why me? How is it that I was able to survive? A mother of four, her life hanging in the balance for hours at this candle factory after a natural disaster of historic proportions ravaged her small corner of Kentucky. In the beating heart of the country, over the weekend, a massive storm, a giant among giants. At least 40 reported tornadoes tearing apart the landscape piece by piece. This was a large destructive event across nine states in the month of December. Just crazy. At least 88 men, women, and children killed. What were those 24 hours like? Hell? Like a war zone? From Kentucky. It's just uh, upsetting. To Missouri, Illinois, Tennessee, Arkansas. Nine states battered by the storm's path. Our community has suffered such a tremendous loss of life, of a way to make a living, of homes, and we cry with them. The largest, a massive EF3 tornado stretching 200 miles across Kentucky, with wind speeds hitting 206 miles per hour. Nothing that was standing in the direct line of this tornado uh, is still standing. If hell had a theme park, this would be it. Homes and businesses by the hundreds, gone. We lost everything. We lost our home. We lost all of our vehicles, uh, all of our belongings. Uh, we basically have nothing. Tens of thousands more left without power or water. The deadliest, most destructive tornado outbreak to strike the U.S. in more than a decade. We've now been granted the immediate federal state of emergency. It is rare. It was granted incredibly quickly. The National Guard uh, has been deployed. We have over 300 guardsmen that are active. Friday in the hours before the storm, the National Weather Service issuing multiple warnings of possible tornadoes for Western Kentucky, Southern Missouri, Southern Illinois, and Southwest Indiana. At times using the word destructive to describe the potential tornadoes. This was a well forecast event days in advance. And then on the night of these storms, very good warnings, excellent lead times, 20, 30, 40 minute lead times at times from some of these uh, tornadoes that were on the ground. And using words like destructive, life-threatening, really telling people to take cover. As day turned to night, the region fell into the crosshairs of an unstoppable storm. Regardless of the time of year, this was a large outbreak. Tornadoes across nine states and not in the Central Plains. This is an area that's pretty populated. So you're talking about tens of millions of people that were in the threat zone when these tornadoes were dropping on Friday night. In Illinois, the first tornado hitting land at 8 p.m. In its path, this Amazon fulfillment center, where as many as 100 employees were trapped inside. There's a lot of heavy 
uh, concrete and steel down inside the building. At least six people were killed. 200 miles south in Kentucky, in the dead of night, tornado sirens ripping through the darkness. And just after 9 p.m. Mayfield in that Wingo in that tornado warning. About 20 minutes later, a life-threatening tornado closing in on the small southwestern town of Mayfield. If you are in Mayfield, uh, you need to be in shelter right now. You need to be in your basement. A uh, large tornado looks like it is going to have uh, almost a direct hit here on Mayfield. Families across the region bracing for impact. And as soon as we got in the house and I got everybody hunkered down, you could feel the house shaking. At Mayfield Consumer Products, a candle factory in the heart of town, Kiana is just checking in for evening shift. Right, so more than nine states struck by that tornado though. 44 tornadoes in those nine states and that was um abc news Cup that was what december the 14th lift there's another one let's check out this one and we know through the spirit this is all prophecy yeah all prophesied in the gospels here's another one this is the nbc news this is the aftermath around the same time, December the 14th. We want to get back now to the tornadoes that have hit six states. As we learn new details here at NBC News about a candle factory in Mayfield that had more than 100 people in it. You heard from one of those survivors, one of those factory workers earlier in the show. Well, now NBC News is learning that employees, some of them, say supervisors threatened to fire them if they left their shifts early because of the tornado warnings. Now, the company, we should note, is totally denying those allegations. They say it is absolutely untrue that the employees would not be able to leave. Dion Hampton broke that story for NBCNews.com. Dion is joining us now. Dion, I understand you you pop back to your hotel room. You're going to get back out in the field later on tonight. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about, about how employees walked you through what happened on Friday as the storm was coming in. What did they tell you? How did they try to stay safe? Sure. So I just broke a national exclusive um, less than an hour ago. Uh, this story stems out of me going up to one of the shelters that was housing a lot of the people who have lost all their worldly possessions, who didn't have any power and electricity. No, the city doesn't have any power and electricity. And I talked to a guy there while I was interviewing him. He told me that he was an employee of the of the candy factory and that while he was there, you know, before the tornado came, a lot of people there had wished that they would have been able to leave and go home to take shelter there with their loved ones or somewhere else that was safe. But they weren't allowed to because if they did, they risked losing their jobs. So I followed up. And I've spoken to five people who all give me the same story. And the story. Well, we've got to bring a preacher out for that, man. Because we know what he says in uh, Sirach. Sirach 12, never trust thine enemy. All right? But well, we're going to start in, we're going to go to 13. Get the dust off this one. This is Sirach 13, or Ecclesiasticus 13. It says in 4, it says, If thou be for his profit, he will use thee. But if thou have nothing, he will forsake thee. If you have anything, he will live with thee. Yea, he will make thee bear and will, and will not be sorry. So those workers were just profit, there for profit. They didn't see them as human beings. That's why they said there, the factory workers say that they were threatened with being fired if they left before tornado. <laughs> They didn't see them as human beings, it was just workers there to make profit. And all the boss and the governor was thinking about was how much money is he going to lose if they, if my workers walk out today? No, no concern of life, no concern of the people that he, you know, that's why we check out another video. Now they're in the pursuit of suing those workers. The, the workers are now in pursuit of trying to get money, trying to sue the boss or the governor for money because that was a life-threatening situation. I've spoken to five people who all give me the same story. And the story is is what? That when those sirens hit, they tried to leave and they were told you might be fired if you do? That's what they're sort of saying, these employees? Correct. Initially, the company wanted, uh, as the first sirens went off, the first sirens went off, I'm going to say around between 5, 30, 6 o'clock, and they wanted everybody to like maybe take shelter in the bathrooms and the hallways. But then there was a three hour window between then and when the second siren had came. And that's when a lot of the, um, a lot of the employees there had asked to go home. So we're talking to 15 employees. That's on the low end, possibly up to 40. But I'll just call it 15 for now. But who had asked, listen, it's getting dangerous outside. 
we're worried for our lives. Can we go home? And they said, well, yes, but if you do, you know, don't bother coming back. Wow. Now, I have to say, and we said it right at the top, Regina, companies saying, uh-uh. Companies saying this did not happen, right? They're lying. Correct. So I, I spoke to the company spokesman earlier today, and he said that ever since COVID started, that they have a policy where you actually are allowed to leave at any point during your work shift, you can leave and decide to come back the next day. So that means if you want to stay there for 45 minutes, okay. If you want to stay there for two hours, okay. If you want to stay there for the whole shift, okay. So they're denying the allegations. Surat 12, let's bring it out in 10, says, Never trust an enemy for luck, as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Totally denying it. No, no respect for human life. It's all about profit. Business. Business as usual, man. Two hours, okay, if you want to stay there for the whole shift, okay, so they're denying the allegations, but the employees are the, the employees are sticking by their story. And some of them, I know, are still in the hospital. Yeah, I mean, one of the women who I spoke to was literally 2 o'clock this morning, and she was talking to me from her hospital bed. Wow. She sustained a lot of um, burns. She was trapped under a concrete wall for six hours. And we started talking on the phone, and this is how much of an important issue this was to her. But she didn't even bother going to sleep because she was saying, "Listen, Dion, this is what these were, this is what the work conditions were like when we were inside the candy inside the uh, candle factory." Dion Hampton, you said it. It's a national exclusive that you brought. So just slaves. That's who you are. Just see, they just see you as slaves, man. Let me read it again, man. You know, maybe this is a wake up call. Not maybe this this is a wake up call for all you two thirds out there. And if there's any elect out there, man, you're going to understand who your enemy is. Right, Surat 13, again, and forces. Though, if thou be for his profit, he will use thee. But if thou have nothing, he will forsake thee. If you have anything, he will live with thee. Yea, he will make thee bear and will not be sorry for it. It sounds like a sucker puff to me. A sucker puff is one of those little insects, what they call over here, they call them, um, leeches leeches just leech on you and stay on you and just suck all the blood out of you till there's nothing left that's ease you know the man and the woman they're leeches they suck your blood and live on you if you allow them to <laughs> the only way they stop living the only way they can survive is if they stick on you and leech everything you all your blood they have to live on blood like the vampire like vampires they need blood to survive so this is e all over man and it's evident now Factory workers say they were threatened with firing if they left before tornado came. Imagine that. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm just I'm out of here, man. No one could tell me to stay in a put me in a life threatening situation just for money. Crazy people, them. He walked for six hours, and we started talking on the phone. And this is how much of an important issue this was to her. But she didn't even bother going to sleep because she was saying, "Listen, Dion, this is what these were." This is what the work conditions were like when we were inside the candy, inside the uh, candle factory. Dion Hampton, you said it. It's a national exclusive that you Ooh, brought. Who they see you are is, is as just a slave, man. Um, it, it is some important reporting, and we're really glad to have you stand on top of that. Uh, I'll let you get back out in the... Dion Hampton, you said it. All right, let's check out this other one. Another quick clip. This is um, more than 120 unaccounted for after deadly tornadoes so this is all the aftermath this is what the 15th of december catching up on the aftermath of these um destructive and there's more so i hear there's more winds over there in T kentucky more tornadoes hitting the other one was what 44 tornadoes in nine states we are going to begin with the most heart-wrenching witness accounts we have heard since that once in a century outbreak of tornadoes across america's heartland in Kentucky tonight, the state is in a rescue and recovery mode with more than 120 people unaccounted for. But the governor says he believes that number is even higher. Residents are trying to pick up the pieces in what could be a years-long recovery. Experts say insurance losses from the destructive tornadoes could reach $5 billion across six states. The death toll now stands at 88, and we're now learning that includes at least 13 children, including nine-year-old Aniston Rackley from Missouri. This photo was taken as she sheltered in place inside a bathroom with her two sisters just moments before the storm hit. Well, President Biden approved an emergency declaration for counties in Tennessee and Illinois, where that Amazon warehouse collapse claimed six lives. The president also 
declared an emergency for Kentucky a couple days ago, and he'll visit the state on Wednesday to survey the damage. And that's where CBS's Lilia Luciano will lead off our coverage tonight in Dawson Springs. Good evening, Lilia. Nora, good evening. Everywhere you look here, the devastation is just disorienting. Nothing makes sense, and so many people are still missing. The Kentucky National Guard and FEMA are assisting in the search over here for any signs of life. And today we travel to an even smaller town that lost 6% of its population in just one night. Cattle rancher Danny Miller says he has seen tornadoes in his lifetime, but none like the one that took the lives of his brother Billy and his wife. They lived in a, a double one that just exploded, I reckon. They said they, they was found outside the house, laying on their sides, facing each other. They were always together. So that's the way they went, went home. Danny and his wife, Jane, say they depended on Billy to keep Lost Valley Farm, which has been in the family for four generations. But when the tornado killed 40% of his cows, he said he wanted to quit. But we had lost this many at one time. It's hard to make it on a small farm, especially to depend it on your total livelihood comes from it. The tiny community of Bremen, Kentucky, suffered great loss. At least 11 people were killed in a town of 200. We still definitely are in rescue and recovery. We have people missing. Um, I still expect that we will find at least some more bodies. There is just uh, so much destruction. I hope that that's not the case, but it's it's still an expectation. At least 17 people died here in Hopkins County. There's an urgent search and rescue mission for more than 80 people who are still unaccounted for. All right, let's break, let's go get it. Let's finish this up today. Dave Jarden and his volunteer group Sheepdog Impact Assistance hit the ground in Dawson Springs soon after the tornado struck to provide natural disaster relief. We're all veterans, we're all first responders we've seen. All right, so. 120 people unaccounted for in the, after these tornadoes over there in Kentucky and other six other states. So we're going to end off with this precept. Enough said. Second Ezra and 8 says, Second Ezra chapter 8, 50 says, For many great miseries shall be done to them that, that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. Kalai Hawabashim Yoshai. That's why. The Most High, Yehovah Yahushai, what Christians ignorantly call God, called him Alashaja, demon-like power. And he's, he's visiting the earth, man. He's visiting the earth, according to Second Ezra verse 9. Let me bring that one out. I said it was going to be, let me bring it out, man. Second Ezra 9. And two says, Then shalt they understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Wherefore, when they shall be seeth earthquakes and upwards of the people in the world, thou shalt, thou shalt, thou well understand that the Most High speak for those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. So you've been warned, yeah, Matthew, Mark. And all the Gospels were going into that. Yahweh Shai was talking about that. In um, the red letters in all the Gospels. Said when you know, you know it's going to be the end. When you start to see these things taking place. And no doubt these things are taking place now in full effect. And they turn the Most High Yahweh Yahweh Shai turning up the heat. Most High is visiting the earth. It's a fearful thing to fall unto the hands of Yahweh that power. Unto the living God. Allah Shadja. So giving our praises to you all by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Hawakakwadash. Demon-like power, Halashadja, demon-like power is visiting the earth. And everything the wicked have done to us, past, present and future, is falling upon their own head. We out.